Now, today, dear viewer, dear listener, this is going to be short and sweet for all sorts of reasons, which eventually will become clear to you, not in this uh, video, but maybe in another one. Anyway, it's going to be short, sweet, and melodic. Would that describe what we'll offer then, Pat? Uh, deepers, yeah, um, both me and you are great singers. <laughs> <laughs> our our voices sing? are like music. Like music! Hey, but so I can't, can't, can't you sing. Ah, huh? you can't sing. I am. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a very good singer. <laughs> I'm like uh, your man about the notes <laughs> playing the piano. Yeah. Not necessarily <laughs> in the right order, right, yes, but not in the right order. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's no. get down to the business. Uh, I. I think we're both feeling a little bit. Um, what would you say? Um, playful today. So we'll start with a playful yeah. item, and it goes back to a, a scene that we've both heard of. And uh, yeah. yeah, everybody's heard of it, but yeah, I, I never was very clear exactly what it was. It's this story about how supposedly Jerry Adams and David Trimble during the negotiations of the, the Good Friday Agreement that um, Jerry Adams followed the Ulster Unionist Party leader, as David Trimble was then, into the men's toilets to have a quiet mm -hmm. word. And he's supposed to have said, how are you doing, David? And David said, grow up as we stood shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> Does that seem a likely story to you, Pat? There's a couple of other versions of no, it. No, I heard all at the time. Hello there, big boy. All <laughs> sort of stuff. So another one, was, another one was uh, Owen McCafferty in his book, uh, a play, I think, in the, the yeah. theatre. Uh, it mm -hmm. was, Adam says, so, the, so this is where the big lads ha go. <laughs> I was going to say hang out. <laughs> go. Well, uh, yeah. Jerry, uh, no, apparently no, Jerry is yeah. claiming it. Uh, and do you, do you think there's uh, any truth in it? Does it sound credible to you? Uh, well, Adams apparently claimed that he didn't even see um, Trumbull going under the toilet. He just went to the toilet and then apparently he, he strolled in and he saw Trumbull and he kept going. He says, we're going to have to stop meeting like this. <laughs> and Trumbull says, grow up. You know, <laughs> and that does have the ring of authenticity because that's the sort of way it, uh, you know, you know, definitely. Uh, so, uh, so that's uh, uh, who knows, but you know, when you think of all the things, the future of Northern Ireland hang in the balance, and this is the sort of <laughs> stuff we're reduced to. But anyway, Jude was, I thought it was very funny, you know, right. you know, you know, someone, Jude, I always, I remember watching uh, uh, Trumbull on a, I think it was IT, uh, a morning show, a mid morning show on ITV. And it was it Martin McGuinness or Jerry uh, Jerry Adams? Can't remember. Somebody from Sinn Fein came in, and he actually got up and you know he was apoplectic with rage, you know, big red face and laughed out. And you know, you when you think back in those days, you know, how did we ever reach an agreement? I remember Martin McGuinness put out his hand in news night to Ken McGuinness, and Ken McGuinness refused to shake it. And then I of course I remember two Ken, Ken on one other night. Union unionism has nothing to apologize for. No, that's like the uh, the white South Africans saying they had nothing to apologize for in South Africa, you know. So anyway, that's uh, when we're sitting here now. At, at we're almost on a hundred and eighty degrees different from those days. It's strange to look back on. It is. It is. I wonder if there's anything of that still there. No, uh, because the, the the two attitudes as are described in that incident are very typical. I think a very typical of Jerry mm. Adams to say something like that, and yeah. definitely. Anybody who's ever met Trimble, you would know Trimble would say exactly that. Grow up. You know, he uh, always was uh, stiff necked. That, and I, sadly say, I, I sadly say Trimble at a dinner and Derry uh, 20 years ago for about an hour and a half. What he say? Was he expecting a, a garmless, charmless, you know, whatever? He was actually quite nice. Oh, he said, nice. No point me. Yeah. Oh, wow. You know, now, I, I, the conversation was probably on his terms. But having said that, it was quite nice after he said that. There's no point in me sort of saying, you know, he was churlish or anything like that. He was. Oh, that's good. That's good. I'm glad there's another side to him. Uh, tell us this. Um, what did you talk about? We, we, he had, he had said someone about that he loved classical music. And I said, hey, anybody, he says, he says, that's grossly exaggerated. He says, I'm the same as everybody else. I like some classical music type thing. Uh -huh. And, you know, he wasn't claiming to be. But, you know, we talked about everything under the sun. I sat beside him for, a, it was a dinner, it was an hour and a half. And he was actually good company. No, I, I, I'm not saying we became boys and buddies or anything like that. Far from it. But you know, he was all right. I've yeah, seen a lot well, of people who are worse. Maybe that was your charm exerted on him, Pat. That maybe that's the thing. Yeah. I did an interview mm -hmm. with him once, and he was he was pleasant enough, but very academic. 
very academic. Uh, it was very academic. I remember yeah, at one yeah. stage I said uh, something I was saying, oh, so, okay, so that your view on that was, that plan or whatever it was, that it might get a B, you know? And he says, yeah. yes, beta. Yeah, maybe I sh maybe I shouldn't say that this, but you, you know, Hume, uh, we we're talking about Trumbull and um, Paisley one day. Yeah. He says Paisley has an excuse; he's a buffoon. <laughs> but he says, uh, 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 Trumbull, he says doesn't have that excuse. He says he's an educated man, and that, that in those days Hume regarded him pretty much as a hardline bigot. Ah, well, you know, there was something of some truth in that. How in God's name did he become the leader of the Austrian Unionist Party? Because when they went into that convention uh, that voting uh, occasion, they, yeah. everybody was certain that John Taylor would come out as the winner. And yeah. blimey, uh, uh, our, our the friend, came along. Trumbull kid, I wonder how did that happen? I, I and was it a good choice? Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, Taylor, Taylor uh, as a but you know, marmite, a lot of people, but didn't she say Sue was trouble? So that, maybe that argument goes yeah. But uh, Taylor uh, uh, sort of pushed off a lot of people in unionism and so on. But maybe, I, I really don't know. You trumbled. Maybe they liked the idea of an academic as a, as their leader. Uh, know, uh, maybe, um, but uh, maybe that goes back to the old. He was a law, wasn't he a law a law professor or a law lecturer? Anyway. Aye, something like that. Something like that. He really uh, was. Uh, he was very academic and he never could quite shake that, which I felt sort of sorry for him. In fact, he was sort of shy, I thought. But I mean, yeah. your your conversation with him sort of op opened up a new vision of him. Um, mm. I I think I might have a suspicion that if John Taylor had been elected the leader, that the Austrian Unionists would have gone further than they did do. Yeah. I think uh, there was a certain yeah. stiffness, both in his manner and maybe even his attitude to things, that uh, uh, Trimble found hard to cope with, uh, or people mm. found hard to cope with when they met Trimble or dealt with him. Yeah. Whereas Taylor, yeah. Taylor, I always thought Taylor was very much the the unionist answer to John Hume. You know, he sort yeah. of looked a bit like him, the same curly head of black hair, and uh, mm. he, he certainly would be able to talk in an ordinary way to people. Uh, whereas I think yeah. Trimble found a little bit difficult to do that. Anyway. Yeah. There's all sorts of puns in the Irish Times today for anybody who wants to go and pursue that. Talking about uh, yeah. the Trimble and um, Jerry Adams having the future of Ireland yeah. in their hands. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, don't let's, go there. Let's, let's go to um, another item from today's uh, Irish Times. We're going to do three now, viewers, so listen carefully and enjoy yourself while you, you, you can because we're going to have to cut short. Pat Leahy has an article in and she says, or he says, is it, Patley is a man, isn't he? Uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. But he says that there are three things that should be dealt with in the course, uh, should be central to the coming general election in the South, but won't be. Now, uh, mm -hmm. I'll tell you what the things are, and you can tell me if, if he's right to what he says. He says there should be a response to climate change should be central to the yeah. election, and that should be discussed. Um, the maintaining of the prosperity which the uh, South uh, enjoys at present should be maintained and redistributed so that society yeah. is made better and more equal. And the third thing is immigration. There should be an immigration yeah. policy that's humane, credible, enjoys public support, keeps Ireland open to the world in a sustainable way. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Pat? Uh, Pat do you think that, they, that they're really not going to... Uh, Follow that, or do you think those questions? I think no. You, well, well, here's the thing, Jude. The the reality is, we're not in course as far as I remember to maintain uh, the carbon uh, rating thing. Plus, yeah. well, there's a whole other thing. But Jude, you know as well as I do, the climate change is as a fact. It's not. It's not any longer up for discussion. Oh, the, yeah. uh, the climate's changed totally since I was a child. Right. Hmm. Apparently, uh, if we don't do certain things by, I think it's 2050. We're facing eight billion a, a year in fines. I, you know, so should, wouldn't we be better spend the the billions now and making sure that that we achieve those rather than uh, having to achieve them somewhere down the line and paying huge fines? So that's the first thing. Secondly, about three or four big multinationals 
are the source of massive revenue to this country. Uh -huh. Now they, they could keep going for another 20, 30 years and 40 years, who knows? But the thing about them is if the four of them pulled out of the one time, dude, we would be in deep, uh, deep shit. There's no two ways about that. Mm -hmm. uh, and immigration is a massive issue, dude. Uh, uh, Ireland is getting, uh, I'm not saying overrun, but it's, be, you know, uh, th uh, there's a massive strain on all the social things like health, education, housing. And, uh, and it's causing resentment. So, uh, you know, but uh, of course, immigration dude is a massive problem right across Europe and they're going to have to do something about it. Well, you know, I I accept that. OK, Pat, and you, we do need a lot of planning. So let's talk about immigration for a moment. Um, if you think about it, what immigration amounts to is this, that the, your population in mm. Ireland, say, is going to be much bigger than it was. So let's say there's going to be a million people yeah. added to the population. Well, mm. is that necessarily a bad thing? Not, not at all. No, no, the countries are far bigger, yeah. far yeah. bigger than yeah. you know the six billion or six million or whatever number you would say for Ireland. Um, yeah. So it's a question then of making sure that these people are integrated, that they're getting yeah. jobs, and that they're paying taxes. And yeah. if you take a country like America, which is you know dwarfs us. They don't seem yeah. to have, well, they do have a problem with immigration, but they have no problem with running an economy or a way of mm -hmm. life with a huge population. Um, so yeah. why the hell can't Ireland have a bigger population? And of course, right, d deal with immigration in a humane, credible way that enjoys public support. And don't be making promises that you can't keep. Make sure that you're saying yeah. to people, look, if you're bringing something to us, this was the case when I went to Canada back in the 60s. We got a thing, and it said, the Canada is welcoming to immigrants uh, if they can bring the necessary skills that the we skills, need yeah. in our whole society. And I thought that was very mm. sensible. And I thought when I went yeah. there, I said, worried, I'm, I'm fulfilling a need, and that's grand. Uh, the same thing sh should apply to heart. Anybody with a brain should see things that way. It's a whole distraction, this bloody rubbish about, oh, this guy's got a different colour of skin than me, or yeah. this guy's... You know, you, you, I, I think... If yeah, the, the, exactly. But here's the thing, Jude. I think from about 1847, our population has been in decline. Our politicians and our thinkers and our officials have never had to plan for growth. You know, every year, Judy, when I was going up, the population has declined. The, every census, the population has declined. Uh, I, I, I don't think our, our people ever had to sort of get uh, get that mental uh, uh, acuity to sort of say, oh, wait a minute, we need to span. Like, there were, I remember Stephen Donnelly, the Minister for Health in the Republic, uh, when they were saying that there was cro overcrowding at Limerick and Galway and Letterkenny, all these hospitals. He says, why am I getting the blame for this? He says, you know, basically what he was saying, I can't magic up hospitals and A&E departments just like this. These should have been planned for 15 years ago. But oh. apparently in this last about five, seven years, the population of Ireland, the Republic has won about, about 5%. We've never had growth like that. Yes, I, I agree that that puts pressure in all sorts of resources and people are finding it in terms of housing and health and all the rest. And if you add to that immigration, then that's going to make the problem even more severe. But listen, mm. we're paying, or you are paying in the South, you're paying your politicians a handsome sum to do what? Absolutely. To come up with yeah. answers. That's the name of the yeah. game. That's why you're that's yeah. why you're sending people to the doll and uh, they're yeah. they're discussing and debating and passing laws. They're supposed to be able to come up with answers. If they're not, what the hell yeah. are they doing there? I can't yeah. believe that given the you know, six million, whatever number of people in the south of Ireland, that there's not enough smart people to put their heads together yeah. and come up with a credible, decent, humane system for immigration. Yeah, every school, uh, even in Donegal, is a, a, a fairly isolated county of mm. one way or another. Uh, every school that I hear of is now absolutely crammed mm. to the apps, uh, to the wall with uh, new students. You know, where there used to be three and four hundred, there's now six and seven hundred. And where there used to be six and seven hundred, there's now near enough a thousand. There's two mm. or three schools, I think, uh, uh, well over eight and nine hundred uh, uh, pupils now. Uh, that's heavy duty. It is. It is a difficulty, and I know I can well imagine it's tough for teachers. But on the other hand, don't forget what's coming out of those schools. There should be are highly mm. intelligent, or certainly well schooled people who will take their place yes. in society and start paying taxes mm. and fitting in yeah. and adding a sort of what we call a cultural value to the society at every turn. Yeah. 
So we shouldn't see them yeah. as a burden any more than you see, you know, your child as a burden. You wouldn't say, oh, my yeah. child, uh, I can't stand this kid of mine. He's, he, he's not even, yeah. he hasn't even got a job, you know. Yeah. I'll, have him to, I'll clean his arse and uh, put clothes on him yeah. and it's cost me a fortune. I don't like doing it. That's it. One, one other thing, it, uh, it, the thing getting back in climate change. Yeah. Ireland is very, I was years ago, we were down south and you know what? We're on the Waterford Tipperary border. As we drove along. Uh, the water, uh, there was a sort of a lake and the water was coming up, uh, uh, and that was during the summer. The water was lapping the edge of the road and I was thinking, Jesus, on a winter's day, this road must be flooded. We, we went down to Cork and there was flooding that evening and uh, the, the lee had over uh, flowed its uh, banks. It, uh, we were in Galway several years ago and it was after the heavy rains there and there was flooding right, left and centre. So Jude, climate change means we need flood defences. We need to, to make sure a lot of money should be spent on things like that, which are not being. And the multinationals as well, Jude, they they want a lot of investment in infrastructure, which somebody we don't have. Mm -hmm. like here in Donegal, uh, you know, there's no railway, there, there's no motorway and so on. Yeah, and you can re repeat the same in Cavan and Mullen, as far as I remember, mm -hmm. and Leitrim and so on. So, you know, there's a lot of places need serious investment. That's true. And we shouldn't just be doing it for the the, the big uh, foreign direct investment companies. It's like the people, mm. you know, who think, uh, oh, God, we'll have to clear up the house because the neighbours are coming or somebody, coming the auntie high, Sally yeah. is coming to visit us. Keep the house nice for yourself, you know? Yeah. The same thing would apply yeah. to to uh, the, the way the country is governed. Of course, when we're uh, hosting companies that are going to be very important for uh, employment, mm -hmm. we should provide what they need if possible, but we also should provide it for our own people and have their self, yeah. you know, we should have sufficient self-respect to do that uh, Was there a third one of those we didn't? We did have immigration, uh, oh yes maintaining the prosperity uh, that provides the resources for government to redistribute the, to make that society yeah. better. What do you think of that? Chances of that item being on the agenda? Not done the least, but as I said earlier, Jude, uh, I think it's four, maybe it's three big companies uh, uh, contract uh, contribute uh, billions to the Irish Exchequer each year. Yeah, uh, Jude, uh, that's very good, and I, I don't see any uh, any chance of moving anywhere else anytime soon. No, but no. I, Jude, uh, there's there's no guarantee in, in this life, so they could maybe something uh, could happen. Uh, so now, in fairness. The la the la for the last election, the government like it was a bit of auction politics. They were saying, "Here's a million for this, and here's a million for that." Mm -hmm. Everything you know, and they were they're like they were sort of buying buying votes. Now, in fairness to them, I think they put four million or four billion away into yeah. a rainy day fund. But still, Jude, uh, they're spending a hell of a lot more than they were this time, say four, four or five years ago. Mm. Well, one of the things that uh, the Pat she, Pat Pat, Pat Lee, uh, mentions the third one, this thing of prosperity and the need to maintain it, and to redistribute it. Now, isn't it a, a sort of a shameful thing that, oh, it's only people like people before profit and yeah. um, Sinn Féin to a degree that really concentrate on this question of evening up the society. It's the same thing in Britain, you know. It's ridiculous mm. that you have people with enormous wealth, and let, right beside them, you have people without homes or can't get by on the salaries they're paid or whatever. That should surely be any worthwhile government should be focusing on that. I, I really believe that should be discussed on a central discussion in the uh, the campaign trail. Yeah, and uh, Jude, you know you get the old usual bullshit about uh, uh, people in the dole are doing this. Do uh, I have yet to see anybody in the dole having a highlight, unless some, somebody's cheating someone right, left and centre, and that, mm. that's a different argument. But most people in the dole... And by the way, see, cheating and the dole in the Republic is very hard to do now, these days because it, there's checks and balances around. Right. And, you know, if you, go down, if you go down the street and have you gone for a cup of coffee and it's four euros and so on, see yeah. how much, you know, and the cost of living in the Republic is now very, very high. See if you, where you can rent, see where you can uh, buy a car, see uh, even going to the cinema or going out for a meal. You know, you know this right. rubbish. Like two, two or three hundred euros a week if you've got two or three kids. You know, as as not living in luxury. Yeah, definitely. And as you say, this this myth of the well, my mother, for example, would have subscribed to. She believed that anybody who was unemployed was because they're too lazy to lay in the bed all day. No, uh, I, and that, 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 I have been on the dole once in my life for two weeks. Mm. And I can tell you yeah. now, it was the most frustrating, uh, depressing experience I've ever. Well, one of the most depressing experiences I've ever had. There's, it's nothing. 
you know, you were you felt aimless. You really felt yeah. aimless. You're not doing anything, and what can you do? Of course, you can go and play yeah. yourself, but uh, yeah. nobody. Most people want to have a job. I'm convinced of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you, you can see how there are people who continue working after the legal age when they could retire. But yeah, uh, there are some who choose to go on because they've got work that they find a meaning in. And that's another thing. When they're creating jobs, they should try to create meaningful jobs. If AI is all yeah. that it says it is, uh, then that should be possible. Okay, on to our last item, Pat. And this is Una Malali, who's talking about the fact that um, candidates um, need to be known. They need to yeah. have name recognition if they're going to draw the votes. And she feels that Sinn Féin um, brought in a whole swathe of unknowns. That is, names of people, people with names that you never heard of before who got seats in the yeah. doll. Uh, and she doesn't think that they did enough to embed those into the recognition consciousness of what she calls the country and I'd call the state. What do you think? Uh, it's not true. Uh, but you know, I, I think uh, the party of the bigger problem is it's, it's sort of I, I basically ignored. Uh, I think it will become more uh, center stage as the election uh, when the uh, the election comes to. Uh, uh, I think it's eighteen now. People they have uh, no people like Simon Coveney, Leo Varadkar, former even the guy here, Joe McHugh. Joe uh, uh, is not going forward. Uh, those guys have all big name recognition. They're, they're, I don't even sort of, I genuinely don't know who's running for Fun Gale. I think there's a woman's name might be Bradley. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent certain. Uh, uh, running for uh, Joe's position, position, but hmm. they have eighteen people. I don't know uh, any of them, and so on. So, you know, Simon Harris is going around the country and you know building all up Fun Gale up. Everything's brilliant and so on. Yeah. But you, they've gone down from uh, and three election cycles. I think from uh, seventy six seats. I think it's down to thirty two. You know, uh, so I don't know, Fun Gale, uh, you know, it's, uh, maybe it's all smoke and mirrors, everything looks great and so on. But maybe I'd love to know how they're going to do in Donegal, for example. Now, mm. Fun our Sinn Féin are, are talking about running three seats and uh, three candidates in Donegal. Uh, they have yeah. two seats here already and it's a five-seater. So it's going to be very interesting. Dude, you know, I, I think uh, everybody thinks it's done and dusted. Mm. Not so sure. I think they, I agree. I'd say there's going to be a few shocks for people. But I, I just to focus for a brief moment on this point she's making. Does it matter if the candidate who's uh, being put up is somebody you've never heard of before, uh, but in the course of the election or the campaign, presumably you'd get to know them? Does that matter? Yeah. Or, or you see, uh, those, uh, she, uh, says uh, those... she, she says Fine Gael bring in people who are stars in, in their own area. You know, GA president or yeah. uh, sports person or whatever or singer, uh, and that they've got the recognition before they come in. And I suppose that's what Sinn Féin yeah. did in a way with the, uh, yeah. the the woman from Tyrone. Uh, the yeah. what was her name? Pat. Ah, uh, uh, Pat. Pat's what? Uh, yeah, she was <laughs> a former nursing. Does it matter? Uh, no, Pat, Pat Combs. Surely you'd, you'd get to know them in the course of the... I would sort of tend to judge them on the basis of what they say or do or if they knock on my door. Uh, right. you, you, same, same Donegal. Remember, uh, uh, what do you call Murphy? Michael Murphy. Yeah. The All-Ireland captain of the GA team. Yes, yes. Imagine in any political party gets him to stand forward and then they bring and then the other parties bring in somebody uh, that nobody's ever heard of. Who do you think the people are going to vote for? Yeah, yeah, that's true. There's dangers attached to that too because uh, we have that tradition in right. Ireland of people succeeding to a seat because their father had it or succeeding yeah. because they were great sportsmen. Uh, yeah. I, I often think that's really unfair, really stupid too because yeah. if I was a member of the party, I'd be really pissed off because I'd be saying, look, yeah. I've been working for you guys for the last 10 years and this guy's yeah. just been wanted in, parachuted Watched in. Him, yeah, parachuted yeah. in. And, and no, get, no, but what, you're no, looking at no, Jack, Jack Lynch. Jack Lynch uh, uh, became Tisha based on yeah. a, 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 a hurler. That's right. Yeah. Oh, Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy Dinah expected became, to see the same skills uh, when he was a Tisha. Okay, Pat, yeah. I think that's it, really. Um, what, um, what will we leave our audience to think about? Oh, all right, I know what they'll think. Tell us what the, how the, the election's going to result. What's going I, to I think uh, sit up. I, I think everybody's uh, Sinn Féin have been in the doldrums and been yeah. in the headlines and everything. 
I am predicting here they'll do better than a lot of people. Uh, uh, the, a lot of the pundits are saying on a very simple basis. There are two Ireland, Irelands you've uh, uh, referred to it earlier on. There's a lot of people who are missing out on this wealth. You no, know, I, I keep saying this. You should never judge a, a country or a, a society based on the the richness of the uh, uh, the GDP or mm -hmm. how well big corporations are doing. Mm -hmm. But the wee man in the street, I mean, quite, there's quite, there, I genuinely believe there are two Irelands. There are a lot of people struggling. And you don't you don't think they'll be worrying about uh, the the shadowy men up in Belfast who are uh, making that's the up biggest lot of bollocks. That, that, <laughs> that actually annoys me. You, you know, without any uh, proof or anything, they keep coming out with this rubbish. They like, know someone. Why don't they come out and say who's doing this? Dude, that's rubbish. They know it's rubbish, but hey, it's a nice little smear. Yeah, and I, I think Joe Joe um, uh, Brawley. 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 Joe Brawley. And uh, a guy called Philip O'Connor in a different yeah. article, I think I sent it to you. They both are saying yeah. essentially the same thing. And they were so like us, they sounds if they pinched it from us, the idea. Yeah, God but, bless them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but on that note... They're short of resources. <laughs> okay, Pat, I'll talk to you again. Bye, Jude. After yourself Bye. in the meantime. And your, and your good you. life. Okay. Thanks, Jude. Bye, Bye. -bye.